so very good morning again and uh, today we are going to explore loving kindness uh, some of us may have heard the name and some of us may have not uh, so basically it is just as the name uh, says loving kindness uh, so just a lot of love kindness and compassion first towards one's own self so that we become capable of extending it to others so we are uh, going to listen to <clears throat> one guided meditation uh, and practice it alongside around 10 minutes and then we'll take a pause and uh, if time permits we'll take up a short teaching on loving kindness also so I'm going to just play uh, the guided meditation. So it's just the computer audio that you will be listening, just the voice. I hope it works out. Everyone is able to hear. I'll just play it. Yeah. You can sit comfortably, close your eyes or not. In this method of meditation, rather than centering our attention on the feeling of the breath, we center our attention on the silent repetition of certain phrases. The phrases are like an offering. They're the expression of the heart. Being words, they will tend to be imperfect, but that's okay. The first recipient of loving kindness is ourselves. So if you can think of three or four phrases that could convey that kind of well-wishing to yourself. Common phrases are things like, may I be safe. Be happy, be healthy, live with ease. May I be safe, be happy, be healthy, live with ease. This last phrase, may I live with ease, means the things of day-to-day -day life like livelihood and family, may it not be such a struggle, may I live with ease. You can use these phrases or other phrases that make sense to you and simply repeat them over and over again with enough space and enough silence so that it's a rhythm that's pleasing to you. This is like the song of the heart. May I be safe. Be happy. Be healthy. Live with ease. And here the skill set is just the same. You may find your attention wandering. You go to the past. You go to the future. It's okay. You realize you're, you've been distracted. You've gone away. Gently let go and come back. See if you can call to mind a friend. We'll start with a friend who's doing pretty well right now. They may not be perfectly happy, but at least in some arena of life, they're enjoying success or good fortune. So if someone like that comes to mind, bring them here. You can get an image of them, say their name to yourself. 
get a feeling for their presence, and offer the phrases of loving kindness to them. Just the same phrases you've offered to yourself. May you be safe, be happy, be healthy, live with ease, or whatever phrases they might be. And then a friend who's having a difficult time right now, bring them here. See what happens as you offer the phrases of loving kindness to them. And then all beings everywhere, all people, all creatures, all those in existence, near and far, known and unknown. May all beings be safe, be happy, be healthy, live with ease. And when you feel ready, you can open your eyes. See if you can bring some of this energy and sense of connection into your day. So I thought it would be nice uh, to listen to maybe a little short teaching to understand loving kindness. So I have 
today Tigna Thaan with me and I'm going to play his teaching so that we can all listen to what he has to say on this. <laughs> it's a long teaching, around 21 minutes. Let's see how much we can oh, maybe take today. Dear friends, to love means to listen. Listening is very important practice. There is a voice uh, calling us and want us to listen. It may be that our body, our body is calling us and want us to listen to our body. It may be our feelings that are calling us and want us to listen to them. It may be our perceptions are calling us and want us to listen to them. It's very important for us to pay attention to the voice. The capacity of uh, listening to ourselves is the foundation of the capacity of listening to others. The capacity to love others depends on the capacity of uh, loving ourselves. I would like to invite you to practice with me uh, the practice of listening to the bell. The sound of the bell is a kind of sound that helps us to go back and listen deeply to our need, to our suffering. Because uh, only when we are able to listen to our needs and our sufferings could we begin to accept us and to love us. And our love for the other people, other beings, depends on this capacity of self-love. In my temple, we always listen to the bell. Every time we hear the sound of the bell, we follow our breathing to go back to ourselves and to listen deeply to ourselves. Listen, listen, this wonderful sound brings me back to my true home. To go home is a very nice thing. But to go home sometimes is difficult. Sometimes we are reluctant to go home because we are afraid that if we go home, we will have to touch the pain, the sorrow, the fear which is there. But there must be a way of going home that would not scare us. We have to learn the way to go home with uh, loving kindness, with uh, confidence. And we shall be practicing together. And tonight uh, we shall begin with uh, the practice of listening to the bell. During the practice, we just pay attention, we just listen. We don't think of anything else. We let the sound penetrate in deeply into our body, our feelings, and we listen to us. And we just enjoy listening. Please do not uh, do any thinking. Just be there and listen and listen.
the teaching of love presented by the Buddha is very clear. And uh, true love can only make yourself and people happy. And the four aspects of true love can be described as uh, Maitri, Karuna, Mudita, and Upeksha. Maitri means uh, loving kindness. Maitri is defined as the uh, capacity of making a person happy, to offer happiness, that is Maitri. It's not only the intention to make one person happy, the intention is not enough, it's not Maitri yet. That is why we have to say Maitri is the intention and also the capacity of making one person happy. To offer Maitri to someone. And the object of our love, of our true love, may be ourselves, may be a person we have uh, sympathy with, maybe a person we are very fond of, maybe a so-called neutral person, and maybe a person that we don't love at all, that we hate, that we dislike. So there are five kinds of uh, objects. The first one being ourselves. The second one, the person with whom we have uh, sympathy. The third, the person we are very fond of. And then the so-called neutral person, and finally, the person we dislike, the person we believe to be responsible for our suffering. And according to the tradition, we have to use ourselves as the object of our love first. Because like we have stated, our capacity to love another person depends on our capacity of loving oneself. If we do not have peace, joy within ourselves, we have nothing to share. In the last 10 minutes, I thought we'll uh, take for reflections. <clears throat> enough uh, of, I think we have enough of raw material uh, to reflect and work upon. And this word Maitri, uh, which he was sharing, is also coming from uh, the root word Mitra, which is uh, used for uh, a friend in, in Hindi language also, Mitra, or Sanskrit also Mitra. Matri. So friendship, uh, basically being friends with ourselves. And what he was sharing is very important that, uh, am I a friend to myself uh, first? And being a friend, I think there are many other good teachings on being a friend to ourselves that not abandoning ourselves when we are facing difficulties, you know, when we are facing jealousy, anger, uh, I'm not talking of good feelings because there we are always there with ourselves, uh, especially with disturbing ones, you know, when we see some ugliness in ourselves, which we are not able to uh, even imagine that, oh my God, how shocking this existed in myself. So uh, then not leaving the ground, you know, mindfully with the breath, anchored in the breath and the body, uh, stay, almost saying inwardly to ourselves that, I'm going to be here no matter what you know, with myself. No matter what I'm going through, abandonment, loneliness, jealousy, you know, pride, whatever you notice in ourselves, uh, just to be there, just like we are always there for a friend. So starting with that and then taking it forward as they were sharing, extending it to others, you know, rejoicing in others' happiness, if somebody has got something, you know, maybe a degree or, uh, I don't know, something good, uh, feeling happy about it, that how good for that other person, that 
rejoicing in others' happiness. And how, how it works is it opens up the locks of our doors, which we have unconsciously put. So I will mute myself here and I'll open for reflections if there are any. Monica, may I say something, please? Uh, what I wanted to say was, firstly, you know, I would really like to thank the universe. I mean, it's such a beautiful thing, what we used to call coincidence. And now we realize, of course, that it's the ways of the universe. That uh, yesterday also, I was uh, in a talk with some teacher online. And the subject was self-sabotage. And today again, you picked up the same, more or less the same topic. You know, how to be friends with yourself. Essentially, if we can't love ourselves, it, there's no way we can offer it to others. And I was reflecting on myself and I realized that there's been a lot of time in life where I've really not only just neglected myself physically and emotionally, but I've been very angry with myself a lot of times. And of course, I realize that now. And the same anger was being reflected in every relationship, no matter how hard I tried and no matter what front I put up, you know, as a, I won't call it hypocrisy, but uh, that's what I wanted to feel. So I was showing that. But deep inside, I realize now that that was not what was true. What was true inside was because I was so happy with myself, that is all I had to offer outside. And that's what I was doing. And now, you know, with so many pains and aches in the physical body, and everywhere I hear that your emotions, unhappiness, everything manifests in the body. Now that is setting off fear inside. You know, because uh, no matter how much I try to stay in the moment, and no matter how much I tell myself that, you know, the present moment is all that we have, there's no point in trying and going in the future. There are times it doesn't work. Quite often it does, thanks to everybody's, you know, teachings, help, gurus, masters. I'm grateful. But what essentially I'm trying to say is that, yes, this self-sabotage that we do, instead of that, if we could just learn to be gently friends with ourselves, then maybe we could learn to be friends with everybody else. That's all. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, anyone else? Yeah, I think I'll go next. Please. So, uh, you know, I had a NDE and after that, there were many things that changed in my life. And the most, I would say, I mean, the strongest change was that I'm at the lack of words, but you know, this unsuppressible love towards myself. Like, you know how they say that whatever is constant in your life, you take it for granted, right? Like say, if you're shown a picture, you'll see the picture, but you won't see the light that's present because of which you can see the picture. So after seeing myself, like my say my body there, it felt that I take it so much for granted, right? That I have it. So, yeah, I mean, like you said, it, you know, because I think the body is me and I am the body, I take everything about myself for granted. 
But once when you have that little bit of space that yes, I have this body and it's such a big grace to have a body to be able to do what you're doing and you're here for growth and evolution. You know, small, small, small practices came in itself. Like say, if I'm taking a shower and say I'm applying soap on my knee, I'll be, you know, I'll give it love. I'll give it handful. So thank you for, you know, carrying my weight. So, you know, those small things and the more you do them, the more you feel the love, right? Like one thing is just saying things for just for the heck of saying, but to actually have some things to show that gratefulness. And even, you know, like what you were saying that being there for yourself, we are so judgmental. It's like while growing up, if there were five people who passed comments on me, now they passed and they forgot. But I would be carrying those comments in me, passing them on me every time the same situation or similar arises. So I think again, you know, we would never do that to a friend. And why do we become our worst enemies a lot of time? It's something I think needs a bit of a time because once you address it, it passes, right? Then you don't have to be there sitting there passing comments on yourself anymore. And that's a much lighter and simpler existence. I mean, you know, one would wish it, pray it for everybody. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I think this also, uh, just like if a friend passes a comment on me, you know, because there is so much of love, I don't mind. <laughs> Have you seen that, you know, with friends, we don't mind judgments. So I think as you were saying that there's so much judgment. So if I am becoming conscious of something judgmental in me, the same thing can be applied here that can I just be, you know, loving towards that judgmental presence, just like I would be loving to a friend passing a comment. I don't mind because there's so much of love in a friendship usually that even if a comment comes, you just ignore it, you know, you're able to ignore it because of the love. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Ritu, you wanted to share something? Yeah, please go ahead, Ritu. Please unmute and share. Are you able to unmute? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hi. Good morning, everyone. So, um, just a, it might not be. I know it just came to my mind that when I say that I love you, so I take myself as a different entity and you are a different entity. So I'm saying that I love you. Like we are two different people and that's how it goes with anything. But when I say that I love myself, so in that case, do I love my body? I mean, which are the, which are the two entities with, where one has to love and the other one has to be loved. So is my psychic being loving my body or my psychic being loving my own self? So this, this came to my mind. Yeah, would anyone want to share anything? Rick, you have many experiences in love as you were sharing. Would you like to go ahead? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I have many experiences in human love. And I've never found myself lacking in the ability to love another. I do find myself, I, I do find it very difficult at times to love myself and to stop being critical of myself. And at this stage in my life, as I've shared with you, Monica, I'm, um, I'm expecting my journey forward to be a solo journey and <laughs> the difficulty is in loving myself. So 
in loving myself constantly. I can do it for large periods of time, but I'm not unfailing in that. So that's my comment. Thank you for asking. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. So, Ritu, uh, just keeping it simple on what you just shared. Uh, if we can use the word attention or the presence of your awareness, even that would be enough. So don't confuse yourself. Don't go into the word problem that much because it will be just a big puzzle for the mind and nothing would happen. So whenever we say I'm loving myself, it can be body, definitely. Why not? It can be the thoughts. It can be the feelings. It can be basically anything that you put your awareness on. Because everything is you. And if I say the universe is you, it would not be wrong. You know, but we are not going there. So we are just keeping it to ourselves, the limited selves that we think that we are. And even there, it works very beautifully. So when you, when you say, I love myself, you could be talking about my feelings. I love, uh, I, I allow, and love is also allowance, you know. No, uh, we could actually do a, again a word web on love because love is allowance. You know, when I am saying I love myself, I am allowing myself to be. Notice that, you know, whether if it's a judgmental presence, okay, I allow you to be. Whether it's a blaming, angry presence, okay, you are allowed. So you are basically validating the presence. And when we are able to do this, consciously becoming aware of our ripples and allowing them yes you're welcome usually we are not welcoming you know if jealousy uh, arises we say oh run away you know you are a bad thing you know why are you here with me <laughs> abandonment arises we say run away you know you can't stay here so basically now as love i am allowing the space to be you know if insult comes if, if criticism comes in the mind you know, i say okay i allow you to be that doesn't mean that I follow the dictate of criticism. There are difference, you know, there is a difference. I just see like a spider in the room. Oh, I see you. I see you. You can be here. I can be here. You can be here. So something like that, you know, the, you allow all the negative disturbing ones to be there. You notice their presence. You notice all the pains and aches in the body and you inwardly say to yourself, I allow you to be, you can be here. Yeah. Fear, Shulakshana ji was talking of fear. You know, I allow you to be here. Now that doesn't mean that I would follow the dictate of fear. So there is a very strong difference between this. Usually in our un unconsciousness, we follow the dictate of anger or fear or jealousy or whatever, you know. But now as I become conscious, I just allow it the space to be. And I'm with myself now with the breath in the body, whatever is going on. So just keeping it very simple and not getting lost in the word game. Whatever you give awareness to, that is right. what you're doing. Yeah, right. Yeah, thank you. thank you. So just in the interest of time, since I have to at this time wake up the kids for the school and prepare Tiffin, uh, we'll keep it this much and yeah, maybe take up later comments uh, later in the next session. Just one yeah, one yeah. question, Monica. Yes. Yeah. Uh, is this the time slot now for Mondays? Because Nowadays, it's a good, yeah. 6.30, 6.30. And tomorrow okay. also we have a chanting, uh, which usually Taru right. takes uh, Tuesday. Yeah. That's also 6.30 at the moment right. at 6.30. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, because it's a good time. Then school starts, the school is a typical. Yeah. Take it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have Thank a you good day, so good night. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.